I'm Gabby Lamb, and you are listening to Tea Time, where we talk about the nastiest, naughtiest, wildest, dirtiest secrets. Enjoy. Hey, guys. (laughs) Hey, guys. We're back with another chaotic episode of tea time i am your host gabby lamb and this is my podcast tea time with gabby lamb um i took a couple months off the podcast and i guess i'll talk about myself for a little bit before we get into the fucking juicy secrets um it's hard can you hear me is this all good yeah okay good again one day pray with me i will have a fucking studio because doing this in my room next to my litter box in a dirty pile of laundry, you know, we could, it's not, it's not the, uh, it's not the celebrity status that I'd like. I can literally smell my cat's shit wafting into my nose. Um, but here we are. It's been a few months. I took some time. I never know where to look uh, over there. Okay. Um, I took some time off the podcast been going through, went through a lot of shit. I think it's been about four or five months since the last episode. And, uh, it was, it was a last, it was a, the last few months were chaotic to say the least for me mentally. I had to take some time away from social media because, you know, it's Instagram for me is my biggest issue. Um, it's a highly addictive form of social media and I tend to overshare and I realized, you know, I was getting too much false validation from that app and I still am. That hasn't changed, but taking a month off of it really helped me kind of reevaluate, um, my relationship with people and my relationship with that app and my relationship to it. I took a few months off the podcast because, um, I won't get too personal, but I, you know, I had to go, I, I was going through some shit. I was going through some shit and glad to be back. This has been weighing on me for a long time. I've been wanting to do this. I really enjoy doing this. I really enjoy reading your stories and, um, I hope they're, you know, I, it's going to be a bumpy for the first episode. This might be a little bit chaotic and bumpy. Good. I'm three minutes in and all I've done is talked about how chaotic and, uh, whatever. Okay. I hope you guys have been good. I hope uh, I've, I've heard from like 10 people, which you, 10 people is 10. I think 10 people listen to this podcast, but for the 10 people that have messaged me being like, where it happened at tea time, we're back, baby. We're back. And if I go on tour with this podcast, all 10 of you get free tickets. Everyone will get free tickets because that's how you draw a crowd. Um, what the fuck am I talking about? I'm trying to get comfortable. This outfit is something else. Um, I got a, I got a couple, I got a bunch of secrets that I haven't, that you guys sent to me a couple of months ago that I never got around to, and we're going to get into them today. I've been on tour. I've been on the road a little bit with Felipe Esparza. He's very fucking funny. If you don't know him, check him out. He has a couple of specials out on Netflix. Um, and I've been very, very fortunate to be have been on the road with him and for those of you who aren't really familiar with the stand-up comedy world being on the road with the comic means like basically i'm a little bitch comic and a big established funny comedian takes you with them to like feature for them so it's like you know when you go to a when you go see like a band and they have like a couple opening acts And you're like, get this fucking other band off stage. We don't want to see this fucking band. We want to see, you know, the band we paid for. We want to see No Doubt. But you have to sit through, like, three other bands that you don't give a shit about. That's basically what I'm doing for Felipe. I'm the person that they're like, get the who the fuck is this bitch? Get off stage. We want to see Felipe. But it's been a lot of fun. And I have made a lot of friends and fans from going on the ride with him very grateful. It's cool to see things picking up again. Um, you know, I guess in COVID, I don't fucking know you guys. I can't believe like, we're like almost to two years with this, right? It's like, it's a long time. We have been in this for a long time. And now we had those like two months of being like, we're fucking free. Everything's opening up. And now it's not. 
And because, I don't know, because of this fucking, you know what's going on. We've all been living in the same world the past few months. My dad, who is a staunch anti-vaxxer, um, also Trump supporter. I don't know why they go hand in hand. They do. I'm not saying. It's not... I have no, I have my thoughts, but I will keep them inside of my head. Uh, but my dad has been very anti-vax and he called me the other day and was like, oh man, so I'm going to get the vaccine. And I was like, oh, what's going on? And, uh, he goes, my girlfriend, his girlfriend, Paula, he goes, Paula, Paula got COVID and it's uh, pretty much the worst thing I've ever seen. And I was like, huh? Oh, yeah, because she was not vaxxed either. Um, and now he's like, well, I got to get the vaccine because Paula's so sick and she's wishing she had gotten the vaccine. And now my dad's doing it. He goes, he literally goes, man, I guess playtime's, he goes, party time's over, huh? And I was like, motherfucker, party time's been over. We've been in this motherfucker for like, a year and a half party time's over I guess time to take it seriously I was like what the fuck my guy I, as he said I, I just it hasn't ever hit close to home for me and now I see how serious it is and I'm like well I guess that's good I'm glad that he's taking care of it now you know the fucking Uni the United States needs a course in empathy we have this thing where we only really care about like things if they directly affect us you know that it, it seems to be the american worldview we only care about something if it if it happens right next to us but if we can't it, it's this individualistic thing i know people will probably cuss me out when they hear this but it's true it's you know it's whatever i guess that's the nation i guess that's the the nation that we fucking we came here to establish was individualism and freedom, so we don't care about our neighbors. I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm, it's just bizarre. I'm glad he's getting the vaccine, though. Even though people with the vaccine are still getting COVID, so, but, you know. <laughs> you can't win. I do have Johnson & Johnson, which I've heard is the best protector of the Delta variant. So suck on my ass, Delta. Knock on wood, I, hopefully I don't have it. I got tested yesterday, came up negative, but you know, you never know with this fucking thing. Good, we're seven minutes in and I've managed to only talk about COVID and uh, whatever. What else has been going on? Um, I started new drugs on Wellbutrin, Wellbutrin and Lexapro. So that means I can't come where my SSRI is at. You guys know, no coming. I tried to tried to watch some porn today. I was like, maybe porn will get me all fucking revved up. Uh, yeah, it didn't. Nothing does. Nothing does. That's just that's just how it is. My boyfriend's gonna listen to this and he's gonna be like, what the fuck? Don't talk about that. That's not true. You come. Well, it's hard. It's not as easy. I used to be like a cum machine, and like now it's like I gotta squeeze them out. You know. I got my boyfriend's gonna fucking hate this, but it's true. I, it, I it's like getting fucking water out of a brick now. That's what my insides feel like, just a brick, and somehow you just I, once in a while now. No more coming for mommy. Don't know why I just called myself mommy, but no more coming for mommy. Well, Butrin is nice though. It kind of amps me up. Got that depression and anxiety mix, you know. It's nice to have, nice to have something to mellow me out a little bit. Who knew? You know, we're all fucking full of mental illnesses. We're all just chock full of mental illness. And I know some people are very anti-medication. I understand that. I will tell you, I feel kind of the best I've ever felt. Kind of the best I've ever felt. I'm, yeah, kind of the best I've ever felt. Just, no. Nah. <laughs> this is so chaotic. I feel chaotic. If you guys are in, um... I'm going to be at Oxnard Levity Live this weekend, the 12th through the 15th with Felipe Esparza. I'm going to be in Portland at the Portland Portland Helium Comedy Club, September 30th through October 3rd. So if you're out there, 
Come fucking come hang out in Portland with me. Unless you're weird, then just don't. I keep getting very unbecoming DMs in my in on Instagram, which happens consistently, uh, mostly from men. And uh, that is a little bit unsettling. You get I get a lot of these fucking DMs from these unhinged men telling me like what a piece of shit I am. <laughs> Somebody I I posted that I was uh, picking up my podcast and this guy DMs me and he's like. Your break off social media didn't do anything for you, apparently. You're still on here talking your same dumb fucking bullshit. And I'm like, can you guys just... You got therapy, you know? God bless. Praying for y'all. Praying for you kings. Praying for you angry kings. So, um... What else has been going on? Got about 600,000 new tattoos. Love them. Make me feel alive. And, you know, let's get into it. You guys don't want to fucking hear me talk about myself. You want to hear... You want to hear the nasties. I usually like to have topics for tea time. Um, and since I haven't been doing it consistently, I just kind of told people to send me their secrets and I pulled some out of the archives that I haven't read before. So this week, we're just going to kind of be all over the place. The more I get back into the podcast, I'll set up my little prompts and you guys email me accordingly. And uh, here we go. As as you know, everything is always anonymous and pretty wild. So my first story. Oh, it's a cheating story. I like that this is labeled. It's called cheating story. This one's super trashy. All right, let's see, baby. When I was in my mid twenties, I lost a bunch of weight and then started a new job. Okay. As soon as I walked in on my first day, this guy in his late forties started hitting on me. I thought he was gross at first, but I had never gotten male attention prior to my weight loss. I decided to see what he would look like as an FWB. I decided to see what he would look like as an FWB. The fuck is an FWB? It's fucking women better? What is an FWB? Fortified... Fortified wet boner? What you guys, what the fuck does this mean? Okay, then I found out he was married. FWB, I'm fucking stuck on this. Then I found out he was married. I wish I could say that I broke up with him. Wait, so you started dating him? You started dating him? Okay. Okay, so then I found out he was married. I wish I could say that I broke up with him, but the dude was insane and I was afraid he'd cause me to lose my job if I broke it off. This literally sounds like every FWB in my DMs. This is, I already, I hate this. I hate him. Oh, he was bipolar and refused to take medication regularly. That's what it is. There's always an underlying issue. It's scary. He left his wife shortly after I found out about her and we got into a shitty relationship. After a year or so, a new girl started working with us who was maybe 21 years old. Fucko. <laughs> decided to upgrade and proceeded to skeeve on her. Oh, just spit on my iPad and decided to skeeve on her right in front of me and all of our coworkers. I had been trying to hide the fact that I was dating him. So people just thought that they were an item. That's, that's so fucked up. Um, they would refer to her as his girlfriend in a teasing manner right in front of me. That's your girlfriend. How's you and your girlfriend? I get it. And he would make jokes about her, Jokes with her about mustache rides. Like your dad probably would do. My dad, personally my dad, or just like dads in general? Whose dad is making mustache ride jokes? My dad doesn't have a mustache. He has alopecia, so he's completely bald. If he had a mustache, he would probably make some sick fucking joke about it, but maybe. I don't know. Um, okay. Where do we go? Okay. About mustache rides like your dad prob would probably do. We were living together at the time and I was paying for his bipolar meds. I cannot explain to you what it felt like to listen to that shit while trying to keep a job I hated. All without catching an assault charge. I finally escaped and I assume he'll be looking for a 19 year old next. That's the whole story. That's the whole story. <laughs> ah... Huh. So not really. Okay. So uh, I have a hard time sometimes with this. Cause I'm like, 
do I comment on it or do I just read it and let you guys figure it out? Um, this is a... Honestly, this is the kind of story that I feel like is very common, unfortunately. I feel like this is... There are a lot of unmedicated, unwell people out there. Nothing wrong... And there's nothing wrong with being mentally ill. God knows that I am. God knows we all are. Absolutely fucking... We're all mentally ill. But I feel like this is... Like, there are a lot of people who are untreated. And this sounds like a story that can be very relatable to a lot of people. Um... Huh. Oh, catching an assault charge. So he was being, he was violent. That's not great. He left his wife for you. Hmm. I, I would like to know what an FWB is. That's my fucking, I hope you're okay now. I hope I finally escaped and I assume he'll be looking for a 19 year old next. Well, we don't love that. We really don't. He sounds like a nar narcissist with bipolar disorder and hope he's well. You guys thought that this podcast was going to be funny? No, not anymore. This is Gabby dark hour. Okay. All right. Oh, another cheating story. Let's see. Podcast cheater. So I moved to a new city for an internship. Also to back up, congrats on your weight loss. We'd love to see it. Um, as long as you're happy and healthy. Okay. So I moved to a new city for an internship. One of the other girls who was accepted to the internship offered a bedroom to anyone who wanted to live with her and her family rent free for the duration of the internship the only catch okay let's see it was that they live 45 ish minutes away so we'd have to commute daily i was down okay that's like any that's literally like driving in la anywhere i got to a new i got i got to the new place and things are cool i'm excited i had just gotten divorced and i was living in a new big city did you say where the city was no um and i was living in a new big city Nothing could hold me down. Well, the girl ended up being a raging jerk who lashed out at me almost every time she opened her mouth. <sighs> That's so shitty. I expressed hurt and didn't understand why she was being so rude. She just said I was stupid and nothing could hurt me. Well, I befriended her husband and... and... <sighs> well... <laughs> Ah, yeah. Well, I befriended her husband and ended up fucking him while she was in the same bed as us. <sighs> For those of you who are listening and not watching, I am taking a big sip of water. Uh, okay, so you fuck him while they're in the same bed. I then started an affair that lasted over a year. And then you put a smiley face. <laughs> well, I realized... Oh, fuck. Well, I realized the guy who fucks another girl while in bed with his wife not my, might not be the prince I thought I was after. True, true. Long story short, I lost my mind and all self-respect. Uh, then I finally decided I was worth more than that bullshit despite the affair. Stopped talking to him and moved on with my life. They got back together, lol. And I'm 85.9 percent sure her insta bio is about me probably should have fucked her instead hmm probably they got back together and i'm 80 i like i like the, t the statistics on that 85.9 percent sure <laughs> not 90 85 that's pretty high uh drop the bio girl i'm trying to see what the fuck this bio is about <laughs> what if the bio was like the bio is like don't fuck, don't fuck husbands in their bed while they're next to their wife, period, XOXO. Because, like, then I would be 100% sure that that would be about you. That's fucking wild. So you fucked him. How? Did she also know? Did you, like, climb into bed? Did you climb into bed and you were like, no, 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 I can climb into bed and, like, fucked him while she was asleep? This is... My roommate's getting home. She thinks that she is COVID, so great. You know, hopefully she doesn't. I mean, who, who knows? Um, she's going to come in and be like, Gib, because she calls me Gib, Gib. We're going to ignore it. Um, that's wild, girl. Um, yeah, you know, long story short, I lost my mind in all self-respect. I'm sorry to hear that. But, you know, like that's it is the kind of shit we go through. You make, you make a bad decision. You go through it, and then you come out on the other side, and that's what life is about. 
or resilient. Human beings are actually quite resilient. We really are. Mm. We can go through a lot of shit and come out on the other side. Just we have to take care of ourselves while we we have to be nice to ourselves. We do. We have to be really nice to ourselves. And we all make poor decisions. That is a part of life's journey. Um, I would love to see that bio though. So DM me so we can uh, touch base. Let's see if she says my name. She just walked in the door. Okay, we're good. All right, next one is LSD and chill. Ah, so <laughs> I dated this guy. We'll call him K. When I moved out of my parents' house and we hooked up, when I moved out of my parents' house and we hooked up a few times before I was over it, his dick was too big. But like, <laughs> I really missed this podcast for this reason. Um, his dick was too big. Like, he also didn't know what he was doing with it. So what's the fucking point? <laughs> It was also just fucking weird. Like one time I got crossfaded with my roommates while he was over. He doesn't smoke at all and only drinks craft beers or whiskey. LMAO. <laughs> Sounds like a fucking turd, dude. And we walked down to the, to the Sonic around the corner. At some point I said, I only occasionally smoke cigarettes, but only if I have cocaine because I smoke parliaments, they have a little Coke cubby in the filter so you can bump them smoke. Mm, nice. He said, if I ever see you smoke a cigarette, I'll slap you. I won't let you ruin your life like that. <laughs> LMAO bitch. I literally just got fucked up and admitted that I do coke and that is what you think will ruin my life? What the fuck? <laughs> Girl, I like your self-awareness. What the fuck? So anyway, I felt bad for him and couldn't bring myself to break up with him. So I just slowly started ghosting him and was talking to this guy, N, that I had liked for a while. We ended up hanging out and I was like, hey, I've got some acid. You and N? Sounds like you and N. Uh, we ended up hanging out and I was like, hey, I got some acid. Do you want to come to my place and trip? So we go over to my place. My roommates are asleep. So I smoke him out. We drop the tabs and longer story short, I had the best sex I ever had. <laughs> I somehow was able to fall asleep around 5 p.m. And he called his mom to pick him up. He leaves. Wait, so you guys are on acid? Also, it's 5 p.m. What the fuck time did you do the acid? What time? God damn. So I text him. Um, okay. He calls his mom to pick him up. He leaves. One of my roommates asks what I'm going to tell Kay. And I'm like, shit, I don't know. I guess I'll just break up with him. Okay. So I text him asking if he can come over. And a few minutes later, he's like, I'm in your kitchen. No fucking way. Apparently, one of my roomies called him and he said he could come over to use our first aid kit because he cut himself at work. Huh? Huh? <laughs> so I went downstairs and told him what happened and broke up with him. I proceeded to go back to my room and pass the fuck out. Oops. <sighs> Oops, indeed, my friend. Oops, in fucking deed. Is this... What kind of chaotic ass... Okay, so you're fucking... You're dating Kay with a big dick who doesn't know how to use it. And he's weird. <laughs> uh, he's just fucking weird. Then you invite this other guy, N, over to do acid with. You guys do acid. You have the best sex of your life. K comes over, is in your kitchen. Why? First of all, also, why wouldn't K text you? Be like, hey, I'm coming over to use your first aid kit. Also, who is a fucking first aid kit? Also, go to Rite Aid. Also, what? Okay, so whatever. K is in your kitchen. One of my roomies called him and said he could come over to use our first aid kit because he cut himself at work. This is a weird fucking story. Um, if you're drinking right now... The new drinking game when you listen to my podcast is drink every time I say fuck. So I went downstairs and told him what happened and broke up with him. I proceeded to go back to my room and pass the fuck out. Oops. <laughs> this honestly sounds like a fever dream. Like, this sounds like a nightmare. 
Ugh, I just like those days since I'm sober now, it's like those days of just like getting fucked up and doing like weird shit with people that you don't care about. And everything's so messy. That just sounds like a fever dream. Oh, I also, your self-awareness is so funny that he's, that you're like, oh, I love doing coke with my parliaments. And he's like, if I ever see you with a cigarette, I'll slap it out of you. And you're like, you think that's what's going to kill me? I do coke and drop acid and fuck guys with huge dicks that don't know what to do with them. Well, God bless you, queen. Um, Love and light. Excited to see. Well, I I don't know. I won't see anything, but I I hope you're well. (laughs) I hope you're well. Um, Cool. What do we got? We got an affair. So this one's an affair. You guys ready for her affair? Hi. So I've wanted to sub- submit this for a while, but I was kind of unsure what category it falls under. So here's a ju- juicy secret. Here's a juicy secret that's a messy roller coaster. And if you know anything about this podcast, it's that we love a juicy secret that is also a messy roller coaster. About four and a half years ago, when I was 19, I started working for my dad's friend's company. It wasn't really like his friend, but his friend's friend, who he sometimes would do shit with, question mark. It was a startup, so everyone who worked there was either family or knew someone who knew the owner. Okay, great. We love to see it. About four months into me working there, I'm like, where, where do I look the cutest? Is it right here? Okay, about f- Yes. About four months into me working there, my managers both started and he did the same job I did, which was in a clean room. So no music or technology for eight hours. So you get close with people. Okay. I became really close. I wanted to know what my managers... Oh, brother started. What did I say? Sorry, I'm going to read that over again. About four months into me working there, my manager's brother started. And he did the same job I did, which was in a clean room, so no music or technology for eight hours, so you get close with people. Mm -hmm. We became really close friends. He was 10 years older than me, married with kids. I always suspected that he wanted to pursue something, as it seemed our friendship was a little too close. But I wasn't really sure. Okay, you're 19. So he's 29, right? Okay. Um, Awkward ass 19 year old who can't tell when someone's flirting. After a few months, he had something personal happen in his life that caused a strain in his marriage. And I had a death happen and we grew this emotional bond, trauma bonding, trauma bonding. It gives us a false sense of bonding with somebody. Okay. So you guys are trauma bonding. Um, you had a death. You have this trauma bond. When it all started, we were hooking up. Okay. And that's when it all started. We were hooking up with each other any chance we could get. And I'm sure it was so obvious to everyone. <sighs> His brother, our boss, asked him one time. We definitely experimented with things that he said his wife would never do. And he could never even ask. Wait, his wife, uh, fuck, 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 I lost my spot. Um, we definitely experimented with things that he said his wife would never do and he could never even ask. Fuck. After a few years, the company was doing bad, so I got furloughed and it still continued. After a few years, huh? Damn. He ended up leaving his wife while we weren't talking. He just wasn't happy. Shocker. And ever since then, we hang out a lot and still hook up. This man has put me through the ringer and I still love him for some reason. Honestly, that makes sense. It makes sense. It's kind of like insane. Because you guys trauma bonded. It's all sorts of messy things. I'm no psychologist. I barely have a high school degree, but this sounds... It it makes sense. That's why you would love him. That's why you would to love him. Why you would love him still. Um... Uh, da, 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 da. this man has put me through the ringer and I love him for some reason. He left me at a hotel, right? He left me at a hotel once right after we fucked to go argue with his ex-wife over their taxes. Classic. Though she uses his kids against him and he's lied to me about her being pregnant with another child while they were still together and more, but he's the only person who can make me laugh and smile whenever I'm having a bad day or a panic attack. That sounds like Stockholm Syndrome, even though it's not Stockholm Syndrome. It sounds like... Okay, let's finish this. 
Um, he's the only person I feel like I can truly be myself with. Anytime I've ever needed someone, he shows up regardless of what it is. I feel terrible for being a part of this affair for so long and for the pain I caused on someone else. But I feel like it's never fun being the other woman either. I didn't wake up one day with a desire to ruin someone's life. I fell for someone when I was young and it turned into this big thing. It's now been four years and he's single and so am I. But we're we're still hanging out all the time and hooking up. I'd love to hear your thoughts input as I don't think this is ever going anywhere with him. But I feel like I can never just be friends with him. But I want him in my life. Okay, you know what? I love that this actually turned into like an advice giving. Um, T... This is juicy and heartfelt, and I fucking feel for you, girl. This is very emotionally complex. And again, I'm not a goddamn psychologist. I can't give you any type of therapy. But anybody who's listening to this, uh, we can empathize. I would hope. This is, I can very much empathize with this. Um, you shouldn't feel terrible. I don't know what to do with my motherfucking mic. Um, you shouldn't feel terrible because you were very young and this man knew what he was doing. Um, again, there are, of course it takes two people to, you know, make a relationship happen and you were willing to be in this. Um, but you shouldn't, you didn't ruin somebody's life. The fact is, is that this man was clearly unhappy in his marriage and was dishonest. You were young and, fucking into this guy who was cheating on his wife and that's not necessarily your fault yes you were engaging you had like the choice to not be involved but i wouldn't take on like the re emotional responsibility of being the person who should feel sorry um being the other woman sucks and you know i empathize with the wife who, but we, you know, it's, it's the same thing. We don't know anything about, I don't know anything about you or this man or the woman. We don't know anything about their relationship. Um, but any man, any person like with integrity and respect for themselves would have an emotionally honest conversation about this. Um, I feel terrible for being a part of this affair for so long and for the pain I caused on someone else. So it's like between this would either like you have to forgive yourself and get out of the relationship if you haven't already with this man. I know that that's not very easy. It's so much easier said than done, obviously. That's why we all stay in fucking unhealthy relationships for as long as we do. Um I didn't wake up one day with a desire to ruin someone's life. Of course you did, did not. I mean, very few people do, you know, unless you're a complete fucking nar narcissist, sociopath, but all of this makes sense. And, uh, I fell for someone when I was young and it turned into this big thing. <sighs> I'd love to hear your input. I don't think it's ever going to go anywhere with him, but I feel like I can never just be friends with him. You can't, you can't, at least not for a long time. Um, you would need to put this relationship on a big hold big pause and take care of yourself, put yourself first. And might I recommend to anybody who's listening a 12 step program <laughs> called sex and love addicts anonymous, um, or Al-Anon or Coda. Those are all great 12 step programs. Slaw is one of my favorite fucking 12 step programs. And you learn a lot about yourself and how to have healthy relationships with yourself and other people and how to set boundaries. Um, I recommend you look into that 12 step program again. Sorry. I didn't mean to turn tea time into a fucking therapy session, but I really do value this email and what you've been through. Um, and it is juicy. It is honestly very juicy, but this man is a troubled man and you need to put, you need to put yourself first and get out of this relationship when you can, you will know, like my therapist always says to me, like when you hit your emotional bottom, you will know like when it's time to leave, if that makes sense. Um, maybe you just haven't hit it yet. It, maybe you have not hit it yet. He left me at a hotel once right after we fucked to go argue with his ex-wife over their taxes. I mean, he's selfish. She's somewhere else. And he will never be the person that you want. 
you have to be that for yourself. You need to go take care of yourself. And I understand that you've been going through this for a very long time. You were 19. It's very young. Um, so I hope that you find some peace with this. You emailed this to me in June. So it's June, July, August. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder where you're at now, but you, you, you signed off as anonymous dumb bitch. You're not a dumb bitch. You are not a dumb bitch. You are a girl who has gotten mixed up in a shitty fucking circumstance with a man who wanted it all. Because they always do. And I'm sorry that you are hurt. Okay. We will move on. You guys can think about that. If I gave you bad advice, don't listen to it. If I gave you bad advice, if, you, if I gave bad advice, you guys can DM me and say, hey, fuck you and your stupid advice. Um, let's see what else we've got in here. Oh, I got this. This is just for me, but I'll read it to you guys. Um, <laughs> got this email a couple days ago. Hi, Gabby. I don't know if you believe in voodoo. I am a spellcaster and I was contacted to hurt you. These are the kinds of fucking emails I get, you guys. I'm actually not supposed to be telling you this, but the Oracle want me to send a message, to send a warning message to you. Some people want to hurt you. Ganging up against you. Saying you have much fame. I wish I fucking did. I really wish I did. Uh, I might not. I might not know exactly how you behave to people, but you need to be careful. If I do not do the job to hurt you, someone else. If I do not do the job to hurt you, someone else will. They already sent me your pictures and they gave me your number and everything. I need to hurt you. The ball is in your court. You need to be protected. If you have any question, you are free to talk to me before matters get worse. Have a nice day. <laughs> Should I email back and be like, is this my mom? Be like, mom, is that you? Mom, just call me. Mom, we can just have a conversation. You don't have to send me this weird grammatically incorrect email. Um, yeah, so that's the kind of shit I get. So this person is sent to hurt me. But now they're saying, I won't hurt you, but somebody else will, unless you want me to hurt you first, which uh, that was sent to me three months ago, I guess. And, uh, has anybody hurt me in the past few months emotionally? Just myself. And this is like my, okay, doesn't matter. All right. We have one more left. I, I have a bunch more left, but we'll end it soon, you know. <sighs> cheating story it's long got em hmm. i look sweaty it looks sweaty and i'm fucking breaking out um god damn it okay i'm sorry you guys is my is my mic on my mic on blah 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 yes okay this is how i probably ruined a friendship by sleeping with his co-worker's girlfriend yeah Okay. Yeah. We're off to a start. <laughs> we are off to a start. Background. I had moved away and had met a good friend through a program at the local school. He then moved to the big city for a job close to where my family was from. And I was coincidentally visiting. Met in PDX, visited him in Detroit. What's PDX? So coming home, I was more escaping an ex than anything else. Aren't we all? How many of you guys make a big move to escape an ex? Think about it. Um, okay, so we were living together. She was awful to exist next to, like walking by a dive bar, grease trap every time you go to the fridge, but as a personality. And I was like, ah, bye <laughs> for a few weeks, even though we still had months on the lease. Ah, bye. <laughs> Still was drinking at this point, and how jovial it was, usually filled with glee and dance, but damn, I get vengeful. Well written. That's a very colorful sentence. How jovial it was, usually filled with glee and dance. So, story. Call up the buddy that I'll be around, and we should catch up. Okay? He says, we going out to the classic tune of whiskey jingles and mistakes. 
how did he know that the exact tune was stuck in my head? I feel like, okay, first of all, I feel like some of y'all are fucking writing these, like you're trying to write a goddamn, a goddamn novel and it's good. You know, some of these are good. All right. You shouldn't submit this. You got to write, you got a literary agent. I know some people. Ah, okay. To the exact tune that was stuck in my head. We're going to this arcade bar. You can meet my friend. You can meet my work friends. Get a nightcap by mine and we'll get breakfast in the morning. It'll be a blast. It was not that. We get around and out. I meet the friends. Play some Ninja Turtles and Ski Ball. Doing the thing. Pleasantries. Making friends. But they start talking work. Sick. I wanted a break anyway. While enjoying the city skyline and do the, how this is what the fuck is this? <laughs> while, <laughs> while enjoying the city skyline and doing a sketch because I'm a motherfucking artist, and this guy, this Midwest punk wannabe with a DIY mustache, senior douche nozzle, shouts from across a table of people whom I do not know. Hey, are you? And I'm sure if it's okay to say this out loud, autistic or something. <laughs> Their words, not mine. And quickly, I look back and say, just about as much as you. Zing! Ooh! But that's one point in the pocket in a defensive audition to get fucked with. It's shrugged off by everyone but me because fuck this douche nozzle. He has the audacity. A dumb mustache also. But, uh, but also... A girlfriend. Okay, plot thickens. Girls with dumb boyfriends love me for some dumb fucking reason. It's usually this way, but I ignore it. I don't know why, because my track record says I'm a shitty boyfriend. It doesn't make sense. I make friends with this girl. Introduce each other, and it turns out she's the same name as my ex, but one letter off. Fucking perfect. <laughs> this girl was very attractive in the Velma sense. Had a huge laugh and really enjoyed to pause before a punchline. Good at skee ball, not at billards. <laughs> Are you writing a fucking. This sounds like. Like a fucking. Like a mafia pilot. You know what I'm trying to say? A fucking. Sounds like a bunch of guys hanging out in the 1940s. Okay. So I do what all people with vendettas do get vengeance I, I don't believe the story but at this point it's fun to read she leaves with me and my buddy to go to the bar wasn't she with her girlfriend she would literally just straight up leave her man with you she leaves with me and my buddy to go to the bar near his while saying we're all meeting back there right in an uber meant for two so she is my she is my lap the deal is sealed my good chimps okay my buddy, my buddy knows what's happening because, well, I told him <laughs> I was going to fuck, <laughs> I was going to fuck this guy's girlfriend as well as I must to make this night exist forever for everyone involved. She comes back to the friend's place to crash since Ubers are done. Psh, what? Showtime. We fool around. Wasn't she with her fucking boyfriend at this bar? Didn't he yell at you and say, are you autistic? And then you left with his girlfriend? I... Okay. We fool around. I like that you said showtime. <laughs> All right. We fool around. We go outside to climb a tree and drink more. Damn, dude. Like, we were fucking in a damn tree. <laughs> damn, dude. Like, we were fucking in a damn tree in the middle of Detroit at, like, 3 a.m. Flicking... Flicking smokes at squirrels. No, you weren't. You actually weren't doing any of this, but okay. Motherfucker, you could say this, but she would like climbed up a few branches with a sundress on and I was like munching box like a goddamn woodpecker at dawn. Obtuse shit. I'm wondering if you are having a straight up mental breakdown while you're writing this email. I, this is not true. Okay. <laughs> she was good. <laughs> She was good to be sleeping on a couch with me. Because why, huh? But she didn't know I snored after I drank a large amount. I slept well. No sleep till Brooklyn. 
Liberty Bell chimes. I woke up and she wasn't there. What the fuck? Never talked to her again, plus one. But I did see a steep decline in the amount of my friend reached out to me. Texted her once or twice, but nothing. All that's left... Stop. All that's left is the photo below she sent me when she had gotten home. And the contact name, Captain Nunderpants. <laughs> so, full disclosure of her. She didn't do anything but pursue this piece of ass and was a shitty person as well. I hate that you just call yourself this piece of ass. It was a takedown of structure, not the individual's. She was sweet in the way that I'll put fingers in places, but probably not want to see again. So, I'd call it a success. <laughs> if you say mean things for no reason, people are going to have sex with your girlfriend. Now, there, there is the moral of this story. You hear that, guys? Write it down. Write it down. If you say mean things for no reason, people are going to have sex with your girlfriend. I'd like, I'd like this picture. I'd like to think of this picture as the oh no moment as she sent it to me from their shared living space. And uh, he did send me a picture of Captain Underpants. Uh, well, I, I wish I could show it to you guys, but you know I'm not going to do that, huh? That was a. Hmm. What do you guys think about that? What do you guys? I got. I got. Hold. On, I got to revisit some of that. This language. We fool around. We go outside to climb a tree and drink more. Damn, dude. Like we were fucking in a damn tree in the middle of Detroit, flicking smokes at squirrels. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did I just fucking... Hold on. What the fuck? I think I just... Undid all of the work I just did. Motherfucker. Motherfucker. Well, if I did... Thanks for listening, guys. Fuck. <laughs>